Hello, I'm going to interpret some of the major planetary configurations in the birth chart of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, a leading politician in the Democratic Party in the United States. And in doing this, we will learn something about vibrational astrology, because that's the system that I will use to interpret these planetary configurations. And we will learn why I believe that she will permanently change the landscape of American politics. One of the first things I do with a leading person in American politics is to see what's going on with the 9 vibration and the 13 vibration in their charts. The reason for this is because the 9 vibration <clears throat> excuse me, the 9 vibration is very prominent in most leaders of the Democratic Party. So I have made another video on compatibility and I have a link to that video at the end of this video where I show the very close connections between the nine vibration chart of former President Barack Obama and his Vice President Joe Biden. I also show some of the connections in the nine vibration between Bill and Hillary Clinton. So bottom line is the nine vibration tends to be very strong among leaders in the Democratic Party. And the reason for this is that the nine vibration has to do with how we fit into our communities. The nine vibration removes the tendency to alienation, to feeling that you are not a full participant in your community, anybody that is marginalized. And the Democratic Party puts a big emphasis on inclusion, support, a negative tendency of the nine vibration is to be indulgent, and that is what the Republicans criticize the Democrats for, being indulgent, not encouraging people to stand on their own feet, and to be pioneers like they are, because the Republican Party often has a strong 13 vibration emphasis. And 13 vibration is about standing out from the crowd, standing on your own, pioneering, being exceptional. So one reason why I predicted that Donald Trump would win the nomination by the Republican Party to run as president is because his strong 13 vibration was being activated by transits. And as the election approached, I said he had a very good chance of winning. Both his nomination and his chance of winning were considered to be very low by the experts of both the right and left. But astrologically, we could see the tendency for this. Similarly, we have Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, a new fireball on the uh, scene of politics. How long will this last? Will it, she just be like a, a fireworks display and, and fade out in, in a half a year? Uh, will she undo herself? What's going to happen? So we can see astrologically that she is here to stay. She's going to have a big impact. Um, at least through the year 2023, we're going to see that she has a major effect. This is not stopping. Um, so there's a good chance that someday she will run for president. So she's going to have a major impact. She's not going to go away. Now, again, I make these forecasts regardless of my political orientation. At one time, I'm saying Barack Obama is going to do great. Now I'm saying that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is going to do great. So you can see I'm just picking out what I see will happen, regardless of whether I want it to happen or not. Now, let's look at Alexandria's nine vibration to see if she has the standard kinds of things we expect to see for Democratic Party leaders, because if she does, she will be a good representative of the party. So let's bring up her chart. So here we've got the Sirius 3.0 software, and this is the birth chart of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. We just recently got her birth information. It was released by her campaign as 11.50 a.m., and I believe that the birth time is accurate, that it's from her birth certificate, because it makes sense. Now, what do we see? First thing we're going to do, I'm not even going to look at her natal chart very much. Let's jump to her nine vibration chart, which I've already selected here, so I'll just click on it. And we see a major pattern. We see that Mars, over here at 21 degrees Aquarius, is very closely square Venus at 20 degrees Taurus. So there's a strong square aspect 
This is in her nine vibration chart up here in the upper right corner. It says ninth harmonic natal chart for her. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then opposition to the midpoint of Venus and Mars is Jupiter. So Jupiter is sesquiquadrat. That's 135 degrees to Venus and to Mars. Well, there is a very strong three-planet pattern, which means she has something significant going on, which means she wants to see people being happy, seeing happy marriages, because Venus, Mars, living a vital life where people are actively engaged in their local communities. She often talks about where she is from, and she is alive. She loves where she grew up. It's real. It's visceral. This is the Venus, Mars, Jupiter, the joy, the actual real down-to-earth life of people and the joy of that life. This is the Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Jupiter is opposition the sun, So, which emphasizes an emphasis on growth and building. So she has a nice nine vibration pattern and so that's good. It's not overwhelmingly strong. It's just three planets. Well, it's a fourth planet involved, the sun, but it's what we call a spreading pattern because the line that would be drawn from sun to Mars and sun to Venus as semi-squares is not there. So the sun is a little out of being perfectly in the middle of Venus and Mars. So we call it a spreading pattern. Venus, Mars, and Jupiter are in orb to each other. All three lines are there. One of them is thin, this one between Jupiter and Mars, but they're all within orb. The sun, Jupiter, is, in, is strong, but if the sun was in orb to Venus, you would see the semi-square line and also the semi-square line to Mars. It's not there, so that's a spreading pattern. So she has three planets solidly connected, a fourth planet involved. Her sun is somewhat involved, being opposition Jupiter, which is important. That's what you do. That's your presence in life. So this is good. She has some nine vibration emphasis. Not, a, uh, not extremely strong, but it's there. Now, notice these dashed lines. It's a little hard to see exactly where they're going. It looks like this one goes from Mars maybe to the moon. So there's some dashed lines. Now, if you've been studying vibrational astrology, you know that those dashed lines are 16 vibration aspects. They are the 1 16th, the 3 16th, the 5 16th, or the 7 16th. These are 16 vibration aspects in the 9 vibration chart. And what we can do is what we call go up an octave. We double the number nine. We go to 18. When we go up an octave, the aspects go down an octave. Okay, so if you're new to vibrational astrology, this might sound a little strange or overwhelming, but it's simple. We have a nine vibration. We double that. We call that go up an octave from nine to 18. It's zooming in. You're zooming into the details, and that makes the aspects zoom down. And it will turn these into eight, the 16, it'll, I'm sorry, it will turn the 16 vibration aspects into half that eight vibration aspects. And here's her 18 vibration chart. And it shows that the Venus, Mars, Jupiter has now gone down an octave and looks like a T-square. It is a T-square. And we see also Saturn in orb to Venus and Mars. The moon is in orb to Mars and Saturn. So there's a five-planet spreading pattern. If I start here with Mars, it's Mars, Saturn, Jupiter, Moon, Venus. We call it spreading because some of the aspects are out of orb, like the moon, Venus. So a lot of them are in orb. This is a strong pattern. It involves Jupiter and Saturn and the moon. This means organization. This means trying to develop programs, plans, strategies for the community. She has a strong nine vibration. It's nice and 
solid, you might say, with Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. So this looks like a good, constructive person for the communities. It's not a powerful leader. It's just a very good community person. Okay, good, fine. She fits in with the Democratic Party. We're not seeing her fiery nature, uh, her uh, Green New Deal, and all this excitement she's creating. We're just seeing a good, solid community person. We are not yet seeing all of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez because from observing her, we know that she's has more going on. But maybe that those other things going on with her fiery nature, her, you might say, extreme plans of a Green New Deal, maybe they're temporary, maybe they'll fall away. But we're not done with our analysis. Next thing we want to look at is the 13 vibration. Even though she is a Democrat, not a Republican, we're curious to see if she can relate to the Republicans. If she has some strong 13 vibration, she'll have some of the same qualities as the Republicans of being forceful, of being proud, of feeling exceptional, of not backing down, um, of asserting herself. It can be um, a little you might say arrogant sometimes or strong-willed. Well, let's see if she's got anything going on with that. So we look at her 13 vibration. And oh my goodness, she looks more <laughs> like a Republican than a Democrat because of look at all these fat red lines. If we look at it more closely, we see that Mercury at 7 degrees Scorpio, very tightly opposition Neptune. And Pluto and Moon are nearby, and there's a spreading Mars, Saturn, Pluto, Neptune, Moon. This whole thing spreads almost a whole sign, 27 degrees. But when you have a stellium like this, a lot of planets all bunched together, sometimes one planet is in between two others. So we like to look at the midpoint structures to see if some of these planets are in between two others, because in vibrational astrology, we look at midpoint structures in the vibrational charts. So here are the midpoint structures. Let me stretch this out so you can see it a little more clearly. Let me just really expand this. Okay, I think you can see it now. Let me stretch it a little more. Okay. And we see that there are a lot of midpoint structures. If I pull up a pop-up wheel, so we can look at the wheel at the same time. Let me shrink it a little bit so you can see it on the captured area. We see that Mars is conjunct Saturn-Pluto with a little bit less than a one degree. So Saturn, Mars, and Pluto are about evenly spread. A 53-minute orb, just under a degree. Not extremely strong, but remember this is a stellium. It's reinforcing it. It tells us that she will work hard. She will sacrifice to achieve her vision, her unique path in life, her 13 vibration. And we see other things like Pluto at moon Mars. So Mars is at the Saturn-Pluto midpoint. Pluto is at the Moon-Mars midpoint. That's what we call a string. M Mars is in between Saturn and Pluto. Pluto is in between Moon and Mars. So forcefulness, aggressive. So this is a person who is going to push for what they believe in, even if it's not popular. There's also some sensitive things going on here. Uh, with the Neptune at Moon, Pluto, Venus, Venus, Jupiter, Neptune. She's got a lot going on in the 13 vibration that has to do with being forceful, having strong opinions. We have a Pluto, Moon, Mars. Um, what else did I see here? The Mercury at Moon, Pluto tends to be very opinionated, have a strong point of view. So now we're seeing that she's going to push in her own way her point of view. Very, very strong 13 vibration. Okay, so she's got qualities of both what's common for Republicans and Democrats. 
This makes her a force to be reckoned with. She's a Democrat, but she's pushing a very strong agenda. And now we're getting a better feeling for who she is. Now, back to the PowerPoint. Okay, this is good. It's not enough for me to be sure she's going to succeed. All we know is that she's a good Democrat. She embraces Democratic values. I mean, good from the Democratic standpoint. We also know that she's very forceful and opinionated. Well, we already know that if we've been watching what's going on in politics. Why do I think she's going to be successful at it? Here's the reason. We can look at the 13 times 9 vibration chart and see if her 13 qualities and her 9 qualities integrate together. Because if they do, that creates a very impressive powerhouse. Because that would mean she's got the 9 quality, the 13 quality, and they integrate together. Let's see if they do. If they do, that gives a special force, a power to be a 13 times 9 vibration person. Everybody has these kinds of special configurations in their chart. In Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's case, it's 13 and 9, but only if they also come together and integrate. So now what we'll do, let's go back to the Sirius software and let's look at this harmonic chart, the 117, which is 13 times 9. And, oh, let me, uh, I, I expanded this window so that we could see those midpoints. Let me shrink it back down again so that it's fitting within our screen. Okay, I think this is good enough for us to see what's going on. Okay, that's fine. We can see it. And wow, woohoo! She's got a grand cross, very tight in the thirteen times nine vibration. The planets are sun. When the sun is involved, it's especially strong because the sun is what you do. It's the light of the day. It's her sun. This has to do with her career, her daily activities. Sun, Mars, Uranus. Pluto, explosive. This means that she is on a mission. She is very forceful, very impatient, very direct to implement her 13 times 9 vision, her 13 times 9 sensitivity, which means that she is a pioneer. She feels exceptional. She feels that she doesn't have to sit back and wait because it's a 13 quality plus it's Sun, Mars, Uranus, Pluto, and she's going to push vigorously to get it. Now we see the Green New Deal. Now we see her uncompromising nature. Now we see the force, the impatience, the directness, the boldness. Why will it succeed? The reason it will succeed it will probably succeed. We never know absolutely, but it will probably succeed because she's got a good, solid nine vibration chart with that spreading five planet pattern. means that she's grounded. She's got strategy. She's, she's grounded in, in social services, community network, and she is not going to stop. She's going to make waves one after another. So what we're seeing in the short time that she has been in politics is who she is. We're seeing it in the birth chart. It's not just in the progressions or some transiting thing going on. It's solid. It's not going to stop. And she's gotten a lot of attention. People wondering why is she getting so much attention? <laughs> this is why she's getting attention. Because people feel it. This is something to be reckoned with. Now, an interesting thing, by the way, is we can go to the uh, interactive chart adjust and see how long this lasts. It's a fun thing to do. I'm going to set this to 30 minutes. It's fun and it's also useful. I'll show you why in a minute. And I'll go forward 30 minutes 
And we see that that grand cross starts to fall apart. It's now three weak lines. There's some oppositions going on. Let me go back 30 minutes to her birth time. There's the solid grand cross. If I go 30 minutes earlier, still there. This means that if she was born between a half hour before the time given, time given is 11.20, it's still there. So from, what is that, 10.50 to 11.20, it's there. If I go another 30 minutes earlier, it's actually starting to weaken. The moon has come in uh, for a very, very short time, but the sun is now getting weak. So this pattern is strong from about an hour before she's born to, oh, what did I say? If I go back to her birth time at 11.50 to not even 30 minutes after. So it's there. If I go back to her birth time and I add 15 minutes, it's probably still strong. It's already getting weaker. So her, she was probably born at 11.50. 50, as as is given, maybe as late as 10 minutes later to, to noon, up to an hour earlier. So she was probably born between around 11 a.m. and 12 noon, and the time given is 11.50. Why? Because it's too much of a coincidence that this would fit so perfectly well. So very often in doing the interpretation, we can get a sense of whether the birth time is accurate. So bottom line is, we have a powerhouse with huge 13 vibration, 9 vibration, and 13 times 9 vibration. Now, the other thing we want to look at are the transits and progressions. Let me show you something interesting with the transits. And this is the reason why, another reason, that reinforces my sense that she is going to have a long-lasting impact in American politics she will change the landscape of American politics. This means that if you're a Republican and you do not agree with her policies or whatever party you might be aligned with and you do not like what she's doing, you're going to have to find a good strategy to stop where, where she's headed. One way you could do that would be her fastness, her impatience. Maybe she'll make some mistakes. Maybe you can get her to trip up with what she's doing, things like this. Um, but she's not going to go away. You can't just ignore her. That's not going to happen. Now, let's look at the uh, some transits. Well, what I did is I ran transit to transit. This is what's in the sky. This is not to her chart. And let me just scroll this up. Okay, that. whoops. Sorry about that. Okay, that's fine. Because in another video, I talk about Neptune-Pluto as setting the cultural style. It sets the trends. It's the most important planetary pattern for setting trends. And if we watch the vibration of Neptune and Pluto through the 20th century, we'll see that as things were building up towards World War I, Neptune and Pluto were in a 14 vibration. The 7 and 14 vibration are inclined to be traditional, conservative, to be skeptical of wild new changes. And sometimes it goes to an extreme and can become very negative and become um, anti-development, against modern times a kind of ultra-conservatism, like a fascism or even a terrorism that tries to restore some old, archaic, ancient way. That's the negative tendency. Um, and then what happens is Neptune and Pluto, uh, then in 1914, around the time world War, of World War I, moves into a 13 vibration. That's the quality of freedom, innovation, boldness. So there are three vibrations we're going to see here. The 7 and 14, they're very similar, conservative, reactive, 13, boldness, innovation, freedom, and 11, which is wild and uncontrolled. So the roaring 20s happens when Neptune and Pluto are in an 11 vibration. Okay, I'm going to go through this quickly. You're going to see where I'm headed with this. 
is that leading up to World War II, we have another conservatism, nationalism on the rise right before World War II. Obviously, that's true with, uh, with the developments that were going on, the Nazi movement. And then when the United States enters World War II from 1941 to 1945, the 13 vibrations increasing, breaking the conservatism of the seven and setting the boldness when I, and freedom and innovation. Whenever 13 vibration is strong, the United States tends to be on the rise. And Donald Trump is born in, 19, in June 1946 during the Neptune-Pluto 13 vibration. And he carries that with him. And that's one reason why I predicted that he would do so well politically because Neptune and Pluto have now moved back into 13 vibration in perfect alignment with Donald Trump and that's the make America great again. Get us back to our bold, free, innovative 13 vibration. Then in the 60s, Neptune and Pluto go back into 11 vibration. No surprise there. <laughs> the wild, crazy 60s, they're in 11 vibration. And then in the 90s, Neptune and Pluto go back to 13 vibration. And that is when the, uh, the Soviet Union falls apart, the, um, the, the wall comes down to, to some extent, the Internet begins and blossoms, so we have innovation, freedom, the breakdown of more restricted ways, which is what happens under 13 vibration. And while this is happening, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is born. So just like Donald Trump, they're both born in a Neptune-Pluto 13 vibration time. And Alexandria's is very strong. She's born just 10 days away from the exact Neptune-Pluto. She's born on October 13th, 10 days later on October 23rd. It's exact. Ironically, because politically they're, they're you know, completely opposite to each other, they both carry, both Donald Trump, and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, they both have this very strong pioneering spirit, innovation, self-willed, not willing to, to completely compromise, wanting to go forward. They both have the Neptune-Pluto 13 vibration, and, and for the third time in in modern times, Neptune and Pluto have returned again to 13 vibration now. And those people born with it often become symbols. They become leaders. They become like the poster child. They become the focal point for that feeling. And in Donald Trump, Tr Trump's case, he wants to make America great again. That's one vision of a 13. And in Alexandria's case, she wants to move forward with the Green New Deal and other progressive uh, policies of that kind and nine vibration policies because she has that strong nine and the nine times 13. And I don't need to tell you that Donald Trump does not have that. So every political candidate is attuned to certain energy, certain understanding that becomes important to them. Okay. And so now, um, in, in 2001, Neptune and Pluto went back into seven vibration, and we had the horrific 9-11, uh, September 11, 2001, as the conservatism, the nationalism rose, and the rise of terrorism through the early 2000s. And then in 2016, Neptune and Pluto went back into 13 vibration, and again, we have the boldness, the leadership emphasis. This is why I predicted that the Democrats would do poorly because their campaign message was not a strong 13. They kept repeating nine vibration, nine vibration, community, help the, the community. They weren't forceful. They weren't innovative. And I knew they would do poorly. 
they did so poorly that they that they lost the election uh, for president. They lost the majority um, in both houses. N- so now we're seeing the rise of Democratic leaders like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who are strong 13 vibration people, and they have the opportunity to succeed up until 2023. By 2024, 2025, the Neptune-Pluto starts fading. These dates here with no time, and the Neptune-Pluto is lowercase, means it comes within a one-degree orb, but is not exact, so it's fading out. And this means that by 2024... Um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez will establish herself as a powerful leader. She's so in tune with the times, and Neptune Pluto is reinforcing her. She's going to do this, and most likely from then on, she will be able to move more mainstream or possibly fade out. Something will happen by 2024. I think her message will become more embraced. She may also get support from Republicans. I like making wild, crazy <laughs> predictions. Like when I predicted that Donald Trump would get nominated for the Republican Party when everybody, whether on the left or the right, whether it was Fox News or CNN, said he had no chance. I like to make these wild predictions when the astrology contradicts our intuition. I think she's going to get a lot more support and and gather momentum because her chart is so strong with this, and she has the 13 vibration as well as 9 vibration to keep her in tune with the basic concepts of the party that she's a part of. And by the way, just in case you're curious, uh, in the 2035, uh, a wild 60s kind of energy and roaring 20s kind of energy starts up in the year 2035. I ended this in 2039, and it continues into the 2040s. So, this is how we look at charts using vibrational astrology. We see what vibrations are strong, what the patterns are, and what's happening. Bottom line is that I expect Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez to not fade away. (laughs) She is not going to fade away. She's going to be a powerful force, and her policies and her Green New Deal are going to keep pushing and pushing and gaining momentum. So, you know, if you're for her policies, you can celebrate because she's going to continue to move forward. Uh, If you're against what she stands for, you're going to have to find some kind of way to block what she's uh, doing because it's it's going to move forward given the strength of the planetary patterns and the reinforcement from Neptune and Pluto being in 13 vibration. up through 2023. Let me see if I have any final notes here. Um, Just repeating what I just said. Uh, This is her Green New Deal, and it won't stop. And I think that's my last slide. Oh, she will establish establish herself as a major political force over the next four years, and then around 2023 or 2024, her policies will become more mainstream, or they will fade away. Maybe a little bit of both but I think they're going to move mainstream. Okay, and she will gain some support from the right wing as well as the left wing. And the left wing, right wing dichotomy will be less distinct uh, in her movement. She will bring in both sides. Why do I say that? Because her 13 vibration is so strong and it will attract people. Now that may sound strange right now, and a lot of people who are more on the left side of the political spectrum would say, you're crazy. I'm not embracing this socialist stuff that she wants. Well, let's see what happens over the next three to four years. I think it's going to sound less socialist and less compromising because she's not a kind of person who indulges. So she wants community programs, but she wants people to stand on their own feet, and that will gain some respect from both sides. She will actually end up being an integrating force in the end. Uh, First, she's disruptive, but then she's going to help integrate and pull things together. So that's the forecast. I I hope you've learned something about vibrational astrology, and I've gone out on a limb with another political forecast. Thank you very much for listening, my friends. God bless. Namaste.